welcome to today's webinar at Argosense, um, the title ALM Tool Integration and uh, B2B Data Exchange. My name is uh, Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at uh, Argosense, and I will guide you through today's webinar. Um, yeah, um, first of all, um, I believe, or we all believe here at Argosense, that uh, the topic of tool integration and data exchange is uh, becoming more and more popular. We have a lot of customers which are following a kind of a best of breed approach. So where they either cherry pick the best applications in their application lifecycle management tool chain, or maybe different departments are simply working with different tools. And uh, on the other hand, uh, very often, uh, especially in the automotive industry, our customers, they have to deal directly and very closely together um, with car manufacturers or suppliers in that area, which leads them uh, very often to the necessity of um, data exchange uh, on a complete automated basis. So this is what we want to talk about today. Um, what we have prepared today is uh, a few words about Argosense and our customers and our product portfolio, and then we will go directly in, in our solution for tool integration and data exchange, followed by an example and also a use case for data exchange. And if we have some time left, I will probably go into uh, the product and show you a little bit uh, the administrative and configurative perspective of the, of the system. And after that, we can go directly to the Q&A session for today. Okay, so um, Argosense was founded in 2009, um, where we directly started with tool integration and uh, data exchange. So a lot of our employees um, are coming from, from an ALM tool vendor where we always had the necessity to integrate with third party tools, part, partly also tools from competitors. And that was the reason uh, why a few, <clears throat> a few of our uh, colleagues, myself, we, uh, we started to run a separate business because we saw there a lot of potential and it turned out that there is a quite good market for that. Um, we decided Anyway, not to uh, stay with a, with a single product um, uh, line. So we wanted to have a second product, of course, to have a second foot where we can, be, where we can stand on. So we decided also based on the knowledge we, uh, we collected with requirements management products at that time that we will um, develop our own system for requirements management where we try to do our best to Bring in all the good things from the from the tools which have been already in the market and eliminating eliminating all the not so good things. So we believe we have a very very good solution also um, in that perspective as well. Um, our employees they have uh, long expertise with, with all the leading ALM tools. So we are not only an understanding our own product. Of course, it's very important to understand, especially in the tool integration business, also the tools which, uh, which we are integrating. This is, I think, a very important asset uh, we, we can bring into our operation. Um, in the meantime, we have built a very strong representation in the automotive industry. I think we have about 35 to 40% um, revenue in, in the automotive industry where the most of revenue comes from data exchange. So this is what we see is really coming more and more that suppliers and sub suppliers are working really, really closely together with, uh, with their clients. And this means that they have to open their systems and exchange data directly uh, in order to avoid duplicate data management and uh, being really responsive and, and bringing our products right in time and so on. Uh, what we think is also very important uh, for us, uh, our product development is aligned with what we get on as a feedback from, from the market and our customers. So I would say 80 to 90% of new product functionality is really coming from our customers and we are, we are implementing that uh, time over time. Um, to really provide a product, uh, yeah, our customers really want to want to work with, and and they find themselves within that. Um, here's the 
an excerpt of our customer base. So um, if somebody of you wants to wants to have a uh, have a discussion or have maybe a first hand information from one of our existing customers regarding our products and Argosense itself, just contact us and uh, usually our customers are quite willing to to have these kind of uh, discussions with uh, potential new customers, of course. So I already talked about on a high level in which areas we are we are working so um, from a solution perspective we have that one product and this is what we are talking about today Arcosense symphony this product is um, the choice for alien tool integration and um, data exchange i will go into the details in the next seconds of course and we have uh, our requirements management system Arcosense fidelia which is already used for traceability as we can import or trace and show show up data um, from external data sources within, within our product. And uh, so we can also establish very good traceability between the tools uh, with a separate interface, I would say. But coming back to, to Argus and Symphony, um, the, the, the area of tool integration I want to start with. So this is more or less if, if you have different distinct tools for all these different domains like requirements management, change defect management, task project management, whatever, uh, we, we collectively uh, have under the umbrella of ALM, application lifecycle management tools. Um, you can connect them all with, uh, with, with Argus and Symphony. So it's not only that it's partly out of the box, it's also um, that we have a very flexible way to integrate the products. I think each and every customer really has complete different requirements uh, in terms of how the tools should talk to each other and how data should be synchronized and linked with each other. So this can of course be achieved with our product. Um, and what I already said, the best of breed support. So that means, um, yeah, that, very, very often our customers, they are cherry picking the best applications for their needs uh, um, for the different domains you can see here. Um, of course, some customers, they have these closed loop ALM platforms like PTC Integrity or Polari or however they call it. But anyway, there is, is very often the necessity to, to integrate any other third party tool. Maybe they use something different for requirements management or they have different um, departments where other tools are used and uh, so what we see for example is that Atlassian Jira is, is very very spread in, in different companies so even if they if customers have standardized on, on, on some ALM platform they still have some Jira working somewhere um, so there are different different approaches here which which makes it necessary um, to integrate different tools from a high level architecture perspective, uh, we, we could demonstrate it like that. So Symphony is kind of a bus system um, where all the different, different tools here um, can, be, can be integrated via so-called adapters. So these adapters are more or less um, doing the normalization of the of the API of the of the of the tools. So, for example, if you take here Jira, Jira has a REST API. So the adapter, it's uh, covering uh, the tool, <coughs> the, the API command syntax, and of course the data format uh, the API gives us. And um, we are capturing this API and bring it and, and control it via via our platform, so to say. So each and every tool which we have an adapter for can be integrated with any other tool um, we have an adapter for. This makes um, our customers completely independent from, from the software vendors and their tool versions. So for example, if you have uh, Jira integrated with uh, HP or, or Microfocus ALM, um, you, have to, you have to install a new version of, of Jira and maybe there's a, there's a, change in the, in the API so that it's maybe not compatible anymore with the latest version. Usually we, <clears throat> before you uh, install a new version, usually we are already on the market with a, with a new version of the adapter, which is al always backwards compatible. So you can just update the adapter and after that you can 
update uh, your Jira version and everything in terms of the integration is working right um, without any interruption. Even you can change the adapter versions uh, during a running system. So you even do not have to shut down Symfony. You can do it. So call, we call it hot deployment. Um, and it's not only that if you have, for example, Jira connected with HP ALM, it's not that you only can have one kind or type of integration. Uh, you can have unlimited number of integrations, integration scenarios, what we are calling that. So that means maybe different departments have different mappings, attribute mappings, or maybe you have different Jira servers you want to connect with one ALM server. This is, of course, possible. So there are different variations and deviations um, that are possible in terms of integration scenarios. And last but not least from, from that slide here, um, quite often we have customers uh, saying, oh, we have some old applications, some self-developed applications we will not get rid of. We cannot replace with something uh, more modern, but we want to integrate that also with the modern tool chain. Then <clears throat> we can offer our customers our so-called adapter framework. That's our let's say, development environment for developing new adapters which already covers some very important and repeating aspects in development of the adapters. And our customers can then with a two days training, um, then develop their own adapters uh, based on Argos and Symfony. So they have a complete same kind of technology for all the integration um, work here. They are, they are performing, which is very nice. Um, going a little bit deeper, so um, I already talked about, say, let's say, um, integration scenarios uh, covered by that is also what we uh, call the, um, the, the attribute mapping, not only that it's part of the integration and, and the hard code coded logic. So it's that, of course, each and every um, uh, integration has probably different rules and dependencies uh, you you want to make that integration running so we are calling that processes so it's kind of a business process uh, development process uh, you want to define uh, which is valid for the data exchange or linking of data between between tools and this is where we come up with so-called process templates which define rules, workflows, dependencies, and, and uh, data flows, of course, um, but they can also be customized at any time so that we really can come up very, very closely to your specific requirements in terms of um, data integration or tool integration here. So then it's more or less, I will collectively uh, talk about some more features and functionality, which is counting for both for data, for tool integration and data exchange. Uh, but before we're coming to that here, just one simple example, um, how we have done an implementation at one of our largest customer. It's uh, ITZ Bund, that's um, so to say the IT organization of our government, which is doing all the tax collections and um, whatever you can can imagine uh, in terms of money collecting, um, this is done by by uh, this organization. Um, I think there are more than five thousand people working and sitting behind all these different products you can see here in general, and everything is running through through Symfony, so to say. So it's a not the, the newest pictures, though you see some product names are not the latest ones. They have changed in the meantime, and also they have maybe changed some of the tools in the meantime. But from, a, from the principle, you can see that, for example, here at this customer, the rational change product is more or less the, the holy grail where all the information goes into. But there's also some exchange between other tools, and this is all done via the integration platform here. So initially, um, why they decided uh, for, for Symfony or why, why they have been looking for an integration platform and not only for plugins or, or distinct stuff, which is maybe coming from the vendors of the, of the tools, is they wanted to have one methodology for, for all their integrations, of course. 
um, so that they really can standardize uh, and, and uh, just have to care about how the tools should be connected and do not have to deal with different interfaces and get familiar with that. So with Symfony, they just need one kind of yeah, language, our process modeling, uh, so to say, in order to set up everything um, with, within the configuration. Um, perspective and with that they achieved of course uh, traceability between all these different products um, further advantages of course have been less administration efforts because um, all the integrations have been done with a with a single technology and they lowered their license costs as well as not everybody has to have a license for each and every tool to look up data so lots of the data is now showing up directly for example in the requirements management system you can see the test coverage or in the testing tool you can see the requirements which are related to the test so they do not have to change all the time between the different tools uh, which was also a very important aspect of course and i think the, one of the most um, issues and that was the reason why they initially came to us was uh, the independence being from being independent from the software versions because at one time they integrated, I think it was stores and HPA LAM, and they purchased the integration solution from IBM at that time, and then they got stuck um, as they needed to update HPA LAM, but uh, IBM didn't deliver the right version to support the latest version of, of um, HPA LAM with that integration. And so they, they looked for, for the solution for that and that's where we came into the play yeah and uh, of course they they wanted to to further make use of their high acceptance with the tools they have already chosen for in the different areas so with their best of breed tools and uh, they wanted to keep them and not um, go with a i would say closed loop um, um, ALM platform which covers each and everything so um, this turned to be out also the right decision as uh, very very highly used and accepted by their customer base and Symphony is just working in the background and nobody really recognizes it it's, um, as, as there is something that is pushing and pulling data out of the different tools okay so coming back to um, to the data exchange portion of it. So it's a quite similar picture we have here. Um, the interesting part is that with Symfony, we cannot only integrate the different tools you have inside your company. Here you can also um, integrate, let's say tools or in the automotive industry, it's more that's kind of portals um, which, which our customers can connect directly through Symfony with their own internal systems um these these tools uh the the automotive industry is, is using is mainly determined for example by the large automotive uh, car manufacturers like bmw Daimler, porsche volkswagen and so on and i will come to more detail um, a little bit later um but the same as i already explained for for tool integration here and, and here is really exactly the same. So all these advantages, of course, come into, come into play um, also with, uh, with data exchange. So I will not repeat that. Um, and I will show you a, a, a small example on how this is usually um, set up and, and, uh, and used within, within the market and with our customers. So usually, of course, the um, quality and security requirements increase, the development cycles, they decrease. Um, so there's a strong integration between suppliers and OEMs. So this means everything is faster, more data is, is uh, data volume is growing. So there is a big, big need to really exchange data between the different parties completely automated uh, in order to relieve coordination efforts and get more timely communication about everything. But this is why the OEMs usually they provide kind of supplier portals, which they can access interactively either via a web interface 
or as a branch access, what we are proposing via an API, usually it's a REST API or data is exchanged via XML files. So we are supporting both at that time. So from a technical connection, it usually looks like that. We have the two parties and the OEM places an order to the supplier. The supplier starts developing maybe a control unit or whatever, and uh, does this internal testing. And if there's a, a certain degree uh, or a certain state reached, um, usually um, the supplier is, is sending over a sample where the, the customer then is performing his own tests. And of course, they have their own change uh, defect management system. And now what they want to do is provide their findings to the suppliers so that, that the supplier can fix everything and correct uh, the product. So how is this done? So what we are proposing or what our customers are then doing, first is um, the OEM determines the technical connection, of course. So Daimler, for example, has a system called Dante. Now there's a new one coming, it's called Stark. BMW has its own system. The Porsche, for example, Volkswagen has its own. And there are some, <coughs> some uh, OEMs or suppliers which offer direct access to a Jira server or PTC server or whatever. Or we have to deal with ASM files. So this is a specific XML file format, um, which is kind of standardized, for example, and so on and so on. And what the OEM also determines usually is the process. So how the data should be should be flow, um, the rules, the workflows, um, attribute mapping, stuff like that. That's usually also determined by the OEM. And that's all what we want to capture within the Augustin Symphony platform so that at the end, everything can run automatically. So here's an example of uh, how it's called, kind of a, um, a process swim, swim lane. So on the, on the bottom, you see the OEM status um, mod, state model. And on the top, you can see the supplier state model. And these have to be synchronized. And that's exactly what what Symphony is also caring about. So in the, the red lines, these are the exchange points. So all the time a certain stage is uh, is reached, then the data will flow. That's just a very simple example here uh, for one of our customers. Can be much more much more complicated. This is only for a new defect, and there maybe there is one for a duplicate defect. What happens then? Or maybe. Maybe the, the supplier is, is uh, um, um, uh, creating a defect from by himself and uh, letting the customer know. So there are different uh, use cases which have to be covered. Then. And in the end, then um, our customers, if they are on the supplier side, they uh, install Argus and Symphony and uh, install the right portal adapter, maybe for time it's a Stark adapter. And on the internal side, uh, we, we choose the adapter for the internal defect management system. And so Augustine Symphony controls uh, the data flow between the two systems, which are connected now um, completely automated. Usually it's uh, time triggered so that there's a schedule. So maybe every 10 minutes or I don't know, four times a day or however a customer wants to set it up, data will then be exchanged completely automated. So that means on the supplier side, all the developers are still working in their Jira, RTC or whatever they have in use. But in fact, they are working on the issues which uh, originally stem from, from the OEM. And the data <clears throat> always goes back at the right time, points in time, of course. Uh, this can be even more complex, of course, because usually suppliers do not have only one customer. They have probably more than one. So, so this is also very important. We have uh, customers coming from situations where they build something on their own for data exchange, but then realized, oh, we have much more than one customers. And even within one customer, we have different projects which have maybe different workflows again and different configurations of the of the synchronization so then it really gets complex and uh, um, we can relieve them from all of that with uh, with just easy configuration within our product here and even if um, 
customers want to integrate their sub suppliers, of course, this is also possible on, on the other end of the game or on the, on the other side of the game, so to say, um, so that also they can integrate their suppliers uh, into their system, completely automated, of course. So as I already said, usually we, we talk about the portals which we support with Symfony. We support different data formats like the ASIM XML format. Uh, we have also situations where data is changed via Excel files um, or other XML formats. And of course, uh, with our best of breed or adaptive support, we support, I would say, all the well-known tools in the market um, in order, which we usually our customers have in place and working with. Um, some, some of the additional features now, which again counts for data exchange as well as tool integration, of course, which is very important there. Of course, we can um, synchronize uh, contextual information and attachments. Uh, we, can also, we can also transfer hierarchy or structure information. For example, if you have a certain hierarchy of, of defects or maybe a requirements document which has a hierarchy uh, that can be transferred and considered when uh, synchronizing that data to another product. Attachments, as I said, or the comments or rich text uh, will be considered. So this is more from the, from the content perspective. Um, from the operational perspective, of course, um, multiple processes can be run at the same time. So it's not that you have to wait until one synchronization process has, has finished. Um, it's also possible to have them uh, uh, <clears throat> multiple in, in parallel. They can be triggered either manually or, as I said, with uh, scheduled synchronization, but also um, with kind of an event trigger. So if the system has the possibility, like for example, Jira uh, has the possibility that if you change the state of an item, that we can use that state change and, and uh, trigger Symfony to start a synchronization process, for example. That can also be used. And we have something very important, what we call intelligent data linking. So we have we bring bring into also a separate database where we store um, different um, informa some information regarding um, the data transfer that has have already been done. Uh, in, in, and then from that on, we know which kind of information already has been flown, and uh, we we store that with, with checksums. So for later runs where the same um, synchronization process is run again, maybe for updates, uh, we exactly know what, are, what has been changed in the meantime and we just transfer the data which has been changed and we do not transfer the data again which has not been touched in the meantime between two synchronization runs. So this is the logic we, we have implemented here as well. And of course, uh, we are bringing more IT specific stuff into the play, like for example, clustering and load balancing, uh, where customers have a heavy volume and high transactionality. So um, we can implement just additional Symfony servers and uh, they get to know, get to get known to each other. And then they are sharing the, the, the load and they also, um, take over the load if maybe one of the cluster nodes uh, is failing so that no synchronization and no data is lost um, during the time. Okay, so that was it from, from my perspective. So um, if you like, um, you can you can answer your, uh, you can ask your, your questions. Okay, so there are no no additional questions so i have to say thank you for your time and uh, if you have any any questions at a later point of time just contact us directly here is the contact data and um, you can call us anytime and if you have already contact to one of our salespersons, just uh, contact them with any additional questions and they will they will organize the answers for you Okay, so thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.